Joining us now, Colorado Republican Congressman Ken Buck. Congressman, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, first of all, I thank want to you, follow Andrew. up on what we're talking about here is your reaction to former President Trump's expected surrender today with four criminal trials now looming, your former Freedom Caucus colleague Mark Meadows now also facing possible prison time, but that's a long way down the road, but facing all of these legal complications. Um, you know, what is the... What does this say for the Republican Party? He's the prohibitive frontrunner for the nomination, especially after last night. Yeah, I think the debate last night was fascinating uh, in a lot of ways um, because he wasn't there, because today obviously is a, a really momentous day of uh, uh, surrendering to uh, uh, a local authority um, on, on a criminal charge uh, like the RICO charge that was brought. So um, I, I think it is going to be interesting to watch. I think it's also a sad day for America, frankly. It certainly is, it's just historically, it's a sad day just to see this happening. But um, does the former president need to tell his supporters to try to avoid violence at all costs, instead of saying, well, there's a level of passion that I've never seen, as he said last night, a level of hatred I've never seen. And that's a bad combination, to use his words. Yeah, I, I think he does. Uh, I, I think he absolutely t needs to tell all Americans to stand down and allow the judicial system to uh, uh, take its course. Uh, we, we trust judges. We trust juries. We trust appellate courts. Um, this isn't over till it's over. And, and I think Americans need to understand that the fact that a prosecutor, and I was a prosecutor for 25 years, so I, I say this uh, with, with knowledge of my own cases as well as other cases, the fact that a prosecutor brings charges doesn't mean there's going to be a conviction. and doesn't mean that everything in those charges are going to be going to come out at trial the way it uh, the way it's been charged. So I, I think that uh, uh, sending a very clear message um, and, and also having a surrogate send a very clear message that that violence will not be tolerated is appropriate. But he also when you're asked by a, a, a journalist, you know, what do you think is going to happen? It's it, it's really, a, as you said earlier, really a difficult position to, to be put in. Yeah, I, I, I put it on the questioner more than anything else. I wanted to make that very clear. But there was also, talking about this debate last night, there was political chaos on that stage last night in Milwaukee. One thing was clear, that no one has emerged who is going to unseat Donald Trump as the frontrunner for the nomination. And a question stood out. Would you support him if he's been convicted of a felony, which I know is a hypothetical, but if he were convicted, should he still be supported, excuse me, by the party as the nominee? Well, well, first, Andrea, um, I, I think that Republican politics is not uh, an organized political party. It's a disorganized political party. So we saw uh, an interesting food fight last night. But I do think that, um, I, and I have said previously, that uh, I will not support a convicted felon for the position of president. And it, it was interesting that so many of, your, of the Republicans on stage last night were willing to. It was interesting, although, you know, it was equally interesting to me, uh, Andrea, that when asked if Mike Pence did the right thing on January 6th, um, every Republican said, yes, he did the right thing, which indicates that Donald Trump did the wrong thing, in their opinion. So, uh, you know, that nobody, uh, Brett Baer didn't point out, uh, well, wait a second, there's a conflict here. There, there, you, on the one hand, you've said you support uh, Donald Trump, and on the other hand, you said that Mike Pence did the right thing. So I, I, I thought that was a very interesting point in the debate. I'm also curious about your reaction to Vivek Ramaswamy's striking performance. He dominated the group, despite his inexperience, and maybe because of it. Is that a lesson for so-called career politicians in both parties? I, you know, I think that there's an initial bump as a result of, of um, his status as a millennial, his um, uh, status as an outsider. Um, ultimately, I think that um, Nikki Haley schooled uh, uh, Mr. Ramaswamy um, in, in telling the, the world, you've got no experience in foreign policy, and it shows. Uh, and I think a lot of his statements that have been made on the campaign trail and in some interviews uh, indicate that, that he's really uh, uh, appealing to or talking about some fringe issues that when he comes under scrutiny as, as a serious candidate, uh, I think those statements backfire. And what about the person who places second, uh, Ron DeSantis, who really emerged unscathed last night? He was not, you know, attacked by the others and 
uh, had a really strong performance also by most accounts. But what about the fact that he said that on day one as president, he would send U.S. special forces across the border into Mexico to arrest the cartels. Now, that would, you know, technically, unless you're invited, that would be an invasion of the sovereign space of a close ally and neighbor without going to Congress. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm assuming that Ron DeSantis is making a statement for uh, the opportunity to negotiate with the president of Mexico, um, use uh, economic uh, means, as, as the other candidate said, and try to make sure that Mexico and, the Amer and America are working together to deal with the cartels on the border. I, I don't think anybody, um, and certainly uh, he would need a uh, permission from Congress, and he knows that. I served with Ron in the House. He knows that um, without a declaration of war or without uh, the uh, authorization to use military force, he can't just send troops across the border. So it's a much more complicated situation than it appeared last night. But um, it is, it's a statement that uh, uh, at least shows his passion for what's going on on the border and, and how we need to deal with a very, very serious issue. And aside from Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, and a few others on the stage, there was not that much support for more money for Ukraine, in fact. There was very little support for money for Ukraine. I'm wondering whether you think that that is a serious issue for House Republicans in particular, and what you think about Prigozhin and his so-called mysterious death. Yeah, I don't think it's mysterious at all. I don't think anybody that uh, um, has followed Vladimir Putin for more than a few hours understands exactly what happened in that situation. Um, Vladimir Putin has had a lot of people uh, flying out of windows in, in, uh, over his political career. And I suggest any Russian dissident uh, buy a, a condo on the street level because uh, uh, it's going to hurt a lot less going out the window. Uh, it is clear that Vladimir Putin is a murderer. And it is clear that uh, Nikki Haley and Mike Pence understand that. Uh, we had a vote not too long ago on the House floor concerning aid uh, to Ukraine um, in a, a National Defense Authorization Act, and uh, it was overwhelming uh, between Republicans and Democrats uh, to support Ukraine. And so I, I suspect that uh, Ukraine aid will pass in the House, and I suspect that uh, Vladimir Putin will be condemned once again for being a murderer.